Joined now by defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin. Coach Goodwin, unless you've got any uh, introductory comments, we can go straight to questions. Cool. We'll get started wherever you would like. Go far away. What would be the, the good and the bad that you've seen through two games? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the good, just um, guys playing with great effort, great physicality, um, great energy, um, you know, um, tackling's been pretty good, by, especially by our first unit. Nine missed tackles the first game. and I thought early on in the App State game that they tackled well. Um, so really pleased from that, but obviously uh, room for, for improvement. Um, just continue to harp on eye discipline, uh, gap integrity, um, just playing with, with uh, great fundamentals and uh, great communication out back for the most part. Pretty pleased with how, how we've communicated and adjusted. Um, out back, but um, always room for improvement there as well. One, one sack through two games. Are you concerned about the defensive line getting pressure, or is there pressure? They're just getting rid of the ball quick. How would you kind of describe that? Um, I, I think it's more them get rid of the football. I mean, I, I, I'm, I know the App State game, like catch the throw on third downs was like 2.1 seconds. And, uh, you know, that that's well below what you really need to get a good pass rush there. Usually 2.7 to 2.8 seconds. If the quarterback's holding the football, that's what you're, you're usually aiming for. So, um, you know, credit to them. They weren't going to let us tee off on their quarterback. They got a, got a season to play in and of itself. So um, everything was catch and throw for them. But, um, you know, I, I think we can uh, – do some things out back, coverage-wise, disguises, so forth and so on, to try to make quarterbacks hold the football. Um, so that kind of goes back to your first question, you know, just um, always harping on, you know, pre-snap disguises, making everything look the same, or the same things look different, different things look the same, so forth and so on. So um, that's another area of improvement as well. You've been seeing a lot of that, though, the last two years, that U.S. where teams are just getting it out quick and just trying to let let their playmakers make play so that I can worry about it? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, studying other teams, they, they struggle with that as well. Um, if you look at who's leading the country in sacks, you know, the, the guys with the really good fronts, the ball is coming out so quick with them. But, um, you know, it's, it puts a premium on your coverage as well. You know, um, like I said, making, you know, trying to do different things to make the quarterback hold the football. Or knowing that if the ball is coming out so quick, we can do a better job mirroring the hand, uh, batted balls up front, um, that sort of thing as well. The one who's able to get that sack, Stephon Green, just what have you seen from him and his development so far? Yeah, just a, a, a young man who, who's completely bought into to the program. Uh, credit, you know, um, to him. Just he shows up every day with the right mindset, um, you know, ha has continued to improve. Uh, since we started back training camp, he, he's really grown. Uh, it's become really dependable inside. Obviously, his talent speaks for itself, but just a young man that we can depend on to do his job, win his gap, uh, and obviously brings brings some, some pass rush ability as well. And, uh, you know, he, he's completely bought into what we're doing. Guess what is Jake Lucas added back to the defense now that he's finally healthy? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he brings brings uh, obviously length at that position, um, tremendous ball skills. Um, I think he plays the ball really well in the air. Um, just um, ta tackle tackles well for a corner. Um, just I, I'm happy to see him healthy, you know, and, and his best football is definitely ahead, um, you know, and and uh, you know continuing to grow up. Um, and just mature as a guy that we can count on and uh, has all the ability in the world and just really cool to see him be available. What have you seen defenses are doing with Concepcion that have limited his playmaking abilities, only averaging nine yards a catch, where last year he was like 15, 16 yards a catch? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody knows he's the guy, you know, and, and trying to be physical and getting their hands on him and disrupt him disrupt his time and not give him clean re releases at the line of scrimmage. And then once he once he's in his stem, you know, getting hands on, being disruptive um, and just 
whether that throws his timing off or the quarterbacks, you know, it just uh, throws the whole whole operation off. But but teams have definitely been physical with him and and getting hands on. How big is it going to be for you guys to maintain inside leverage? And because last year he got you on that, and obviously with that big play at the end of the game there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the game last year came down to really those two big plays. You know, the 50 yard run. I think we gave up 62 yards, 62 for. 62 or 64 yards rushing against them, and 51 was on, on that one play, and then obviously they caught the set, the slant route. Um, so our, our technique's got to be better. I could help him better call wise in that situation, but um, you know, you know, he he's the key to their offense. You got a long look at Sammy Brown and D Creighton against App. Just curious for what you saw and uh, sort of your assessment of where they are right now. Yeah, you know, I think those are two guys that that I, I can trust to put in the game. You know, it, it wasn't perfect by any means, but a great opportunity uh, to get them game game experience. Um, you know, they, they played a lot defensively. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head snap wise, but tremendous opportunity for them to really get that exposure in a game environment against an App State team that, you know, has traditionally been a, been a powerhouse of the G5 level. And, uh, you know, they're only going to get better and better from there. Um, the game's going to continue to slow down for them. And, uh, you know, just good, really good game experience, but really happy with their development. And uh, they, they've had a great two weeks of practice, uh, really in tune to the game plan and, and really knowledgeable of what, what we're doing defensively. So um, I, I'm excited to see them take the next step as we go forward. Yeah, I mean, he's a monster. Um, he's a people mover, um, really massive guy in there, but he's athletic, basketball player in high school, so he's got really good feet. And, uh, you know, just kind of same thing with Stefal and just really want to see him take the next step. Uh, you know, um, he's very knowledgeable at the position and uh, just um, – Sky, sky's the limit for him, but he's he's a massive guy with really good feet and really good hands. And uh, you know, I, I think going forward, he's only going to get better and better, and people are going to really recognize his ability inside. Is there an optimum weight for him? Is he at his ideal sort of body composition wise? Um, I, I can't. To be honest, I can't can't tell you what he's at right now off the top of my head, but. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think conditioning wise uh, is an issue with him at all. Going back to the Georgia game, um, just looking at the film, what do you feel like went most wrong for the defense in that one? Yeah, you know, uh, George, Georgia's offense, they do a great job of giving you pre snap motions, shifts, uh, making you communicate and adjust. And, and all it takes is putting your, your eyes in the wrong spot one, one time or you don't get bumped over a yard and a half, and now I'm out leveraged. Um, so a combination of, of bad pre-snap alignments, bad, bad eyes, that sort of thing. But, you know, they, they do such a good job. They, they know what gives defensive defenses issues, and uh, so they give you all the, the problems and stuff. I think Avion Terrell was credited with four pass breakups against App State. What makes him so effective in coverage? Yeah, he he's a highly competitive kid, but he's got great great feet, um, and, and uh, just a really competitive kid. Got great short area quickness, and uh, really good ball skill. So I I think the combination of those three puts him in great position to play play balls at the top end of the route. Seems like he's a very willing tackler too. Yeah, for sure. He he's a physical, hard nosed kid. Is that rare when you have somebody? Not, not a big dude who was, um, who was, it, it was interested in being that that type of presence. I'm, I mean, I think that comes from just just who he is as a as a young man. Obviously, his brother was a great tackler as a corner, and just just his upbringing from his family, just a tough, hard nosed kid. Any questions for Coach Goodwin virtually? Anybody else in the room? With the, with the loss of uh, Kobe McLeod for a season, how does that kind of does that kind of make 
make Barrett Carter away with us kind of more important to the team with the lack of depth? I mean, not lack of depth, but lack of experience from the younger players. I mean, obviously, everybody's valuable to the to the roster and stuff, but um, you know, they're they're obviously the starters right now. But I think I think it's a great opportunity for other guys, you know, to to earn that experience and earn that that playing time. And uh, now is their time, you know. Unfortunately, injuries happen. Uh, you know, Kobe was such a dependable young man, and I, in my room could play multiple positions, and you just felt comfortable if he, if he had to go in the game. And, but now it's time for D and Sammy and Jamal and those guys just to embrace that role, prepare like it's their time, because you never know you're one injury away from being the starter. So, um, and the past two weeks, you know, you see kind of that maturity starting to happen, you know, um, how they, how they prepare their their study habits, taking notes, and that sort of thing. So I'm I'm really excited about them getting to embrace this opportunity. For you as a coordinator, what's it like to have so many other coaches able to help, like in game and in practice now? And do you feel like you're more freed up to do things that maybe you couldn't before, couldn't do as much in, in those? Uh, I mean, practice wise, I don't think really it affected me. From uh, I mean, I still coach the linebackers. Sure, it's good to have Bullware and, and Whammy and those guys being able to help coach as well, but I still run my drills and so forth and so on from that standpoint. It helps us better with scout teams, you know, organization from that standpoint, and then also having more eyes coaching our guys in the moment versus having to wait till film review. So now you're getting that correction in real time and being able to coach have more hands-on coaching from that standpoint. I know he's just an intern, but what has Bullwear's voice been like, I guess, on the practice field and in meetings? Yeah, I mean, he, he obviously was an uh, unbelievable player here for a long time, but just bringing that knowledge and, uh, you know, I get pulled in so many directions, being the coordinator, game plan, and that sort of deal. So now he can take, take moments with the linebacker group and, you know, really pour into them, hey, you know, study this formation, study this backfield set, or this means this. So just being able to, to help facilitate things from that standpoint, and then also being able to help coach and, and, you know, especially during training camp when you got so many bodies out there, being able to separate off and have two drills going at the same time. I think Shelton Lewis played a little nickel against uh, App State as well. Um, how has he kind of been able to be versatile at, to play on, on outside and play at nickel and his versatility for, for you guys so far? Yeah, you know, just his football understanding gives him that ability, you know, his ability to learn two positions and then his skill set also. You know, um, the nickel in today's world, more of a cover guy at times, you know, with the with as much man man coverage and bracket coverage that we play and stuff. So just that skill set and then, then his physicality as well, um, being able to blitz off the slot, so forth and so on. So just his football savviness and, and knowledge gives him that ability. I guess when you watch NC State, uh, C.J. Bailey, does anything stand out about him as a quarterback? Yeah, you know, I think he, he came in this, when he came into the game, I thought he breathed life into their offense. So you could tell that those guys believe in him and his ability. Um, so I obviously he got a limited number of snaps, you know, to check him out. But but I thought the team rallied around him and responded to his leadership. And you could see him get more comfortable as the game went along. And uh, you know you can you could kind of tell from that standpoint. But obviously got length, can, has has good arm talent, uh, can extend plays with his legs. Um, so we got to be be disciplined up front in our rush lanes, and uh, I'm sure they'll have some quarterback run game built in for him as well. What'd you do on your uh, off week? Just watch football, or like on Saturday specifically without a game? I went to Hobby Lobby in the morning and bought a bunch of Disney stuff for my daughters, and other than that, just watch football. So decorated their rooms. So girl dad's girl dad problems. <laughs> It's, uh, I think, right now 6.2, 6.3 yards per play, and a lot of that's out on the perimeter. Some of it's setting the edge, some of it's missed tackles. How do you see that, and, and how do you get that, that? Obviously, you're not really giving up anything you know, in the middle. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you practice, obviously practice your problem plays, 
uh, every week and uh, try to try to get better from an individual standpoint, technique wise, you know, in a group uh, slash team setting. And uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think you just go back to work this week. You know, obviously early on, you know, the statistics may maybe, I mean, that's who we are because that's what we put on on film or whatever. Um, but um, just go back to work this week and we'll get it fixed. And uh, it's a long season. I think we'll end up where we need to be going forward. But um, it's a challenge right now because that's who we are the first two weeks. The threes, they're the Clemson defense. They're not the threes or, or so forth and so on. So the standard's the standard. But um, we'll get, get those issues worked out and uh, starting on Saturday. Is there a metric you like to be at? Like we want to give up just this yards per play, this per rush? Um, I think – Usually you kind of look at the previous year, kind of the top 10 to 15 defenses, and, and sometimes it's relative to who they're playing schedule-wise. But from from a pass standpoint, about 5-0 on average uh, will put you in the top 10 typically. And from a rush standpoint, anywhere from like 2-9 to 3.3 on average. So. In anything like 4-0 a play to 4-5 a play, typically. So whatever CFB stats are, you can take the average of, of that over the past 10 years or whatever. Anybody else for Coach Goodwin? All right, appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. All right.